Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about one of the most underrated and overlooked types of synthesis, granular synthesis. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what it is, how to use it, and when and why you might want to use it in your productions. Producers like Flume and Virtual Write are well known for their use of granular synths, but the idea behind granular synthesis actually came about over half a century ago, and we'll touch upon that in a couple of minutes. But before we get into all that juicy stuff, let's listen to an idea that's using just a normal synth, and then we're going to switch it out for a granular synth and hear the difference. Pretty cool, huh? I just love the extra texture and depth that it brings. Before we jump into it though, I wanna say a huge shout out to my Accelerator students who have racked up millions of streams over the past 12 months. Top work guys, and if you want coaching with me, you can check out the Accelerator program below this video. Okay, first off, what's granular synthesis and how did it come about? Well, unlike other forms of synthesis like subtractive, additive, frequency modulation, a granular synthesizer will actually use a sample as its source rather than an oscillator. The name comes from the fact that it chops up the inputted sample into very short durations of time, and these are called grains. Now, a grain in the audio world usually means a sound that's between about 5 and 200 milliseconds long, so pretty short in other words. The synthesizer can then manipulate and play back those grains in different ways to create really interesting and unique sounds that you couldn't possibly create with any of the other types of synthesis. Now, there are plenty of software granular synths available on the market today, but four of the most popular are Quanta 2 by Audio Damage, the Granulator 2, which which comes free with Max for Live, Portal by Output, and we'll touch upon that a bit later, and Pigments by Arturia. Now we'll look at all the key parts of granular synthesis in a minute, but first let's really briefly touch upon the history of it. Now believe it or not, the concept behind granular synthesis dates all the way back to 1946, when Hungarian-British engineer and physicist Dennis Gabor conceptualized the idea that you could create new sounds out of micro sound particles. Now the first artist to use this technique in music was experimental music icon Ianis Sinarchis, who physically spliced together hundreds of different tape recordings to create the piece Analogique AB. And here's a clip of that. Now fast forward a couple of decades and that's when computer engineers and music technologists started developing this to use in computers in about 1975 and it's just gone from strength to strength since then. Okay now onto the important bit, how do you use it? Well we're going to look at every single parameter that most of these synths have and then we're going to look at some examples of where this really excels and where it's not so good. Okay so the first of these synths I'm going to be showing you today is Pigments by Arturia and that is because it really easily displays what's actually going on when it comes to granular synthesis and this synth actually has several different features that you can use but we're just going to be focusing on granular synthesis today so to do that you just make sure that you choose sample from the engine type so you've got analog wavetable harmonic but we're going to go with sample because then that is going to base the sound as the source of a sample okay I've turned the effects off so now it's basically operating as a sampler would. It's just playing back that piano sample every time we hit a note. But if we turn on granular mode, that's when it's gonna change pigments into a granular synthesizer. And I can start walking through what each of these parameters do. And this is just a great tool for actually visually showing what it's doing as well as hearing it. So firstly, I'm just gonna make sure that our main ADSL controls for amplitude are set up. So we've just got full sustain. So we can see it's just the shape of this piano that's making it die out like that. Okay, so let's look at these main controls now. We've got density, we've got the shape of each separate grain's ADSR, and then we've got the time, which is the length that each grain plays at. Now, if we have this density set right down, then it's just gonna play it through once, and it's gonna take a while before that repeats because it's at such a slow hertz amount. So the more we speed this up, the rate at which the grain is played speeds up. Uh, and then you start getting to that point where you're kind of creating sustained pad sounds, okay? So that's what the density does, is how quickly it plays back those grains. Now, the size is simply the length of each of those grains. So when it's set to full time and one density, it's in effect just playing through that piano sample. But if we reduce that length of time, the grain is shorter. So, and if we do that with the density as well, so increase the density, it's going to create more of a glitchy kind of staccato sound. 
because each of those grains is shorter, like so. Now the last thing of these main controls I want to look at is the shape here. And this is an ADSR amplitude control for each separate grain that's played. So at the moment you can see it's a saw shape. If we move that over here, it's going to fade in each grain and then fade it out much like it would with a normal amp envelope. And you've got a few other shapes usually that you can choose from as well, just to give you a few more options. So let's just increase the density a bit. We've smoothed it off and then we're starting to create these lovely smooth sounds. Now when it comes to the random settings, these again are prevalent in pretty much all granular synths. This is when you can start adding some variation to how those grains are played and this is where things get really interesting. So the first thing we're going to look at is start and this is basically the point at which the grain is played back from. So at the moment all of those grains are starting from the beginning of that sample. If we add some variation, it's going to start playing some of those grains from different points in the sample. So you can see they're triggering at different points from within that sample. If we click this effect here or this button here, we can choose whether all of the random start points are after the beginning of the start of the sample or before the other ones. It's just, it's just going to randomize things a bit more if you choose both for example and then they're going to be bouncing all over the place. Now pitch is where you can change the pitch of each of those separate grains and this is where things get very audibly different. So at the moment it's set to change the pitch both up and down and let's randomize some of these pitches of the piano notes. So you can hear it starting to get really crazy, kind of like a scary film, especially if we increase the density. Oh, scary stuff. And this is where we can actually randomize the density as well. So here you remember we set our density to trigger each of those grains to a particular hertz. So at the moment it's 16 hertz, but we can make that vary. So some of them are going to trigger more slowly, some of them are going to trigger and repeat faster. Let's just take that pitch down because it's literally giving my brain nightmares. So a bit of a detune variation sounds quite cool. Now direction is whether those samples are playing forwards or actually backwards. So you can see here if we switch it, some of these are now going backwards instead of forwards. Size is, as you would imagine, just varying the size of some of these grains. So some will be shorter, some will be longer. Width is varying the stereo width, like whether they're panned left or right. So you can hear things start to get lovely and wide at this point. And then volume is simply the volume at which those different grains are played. So that's the general basics of granular synthesis. And as I said, Pigments has a really nice display to show you what's going on. But now I want to get really creative and I'm going to jump into a second really good one, which is called Quanta 2. So Quanta 2 operates in a similar way from the Pigments because it's a granular synth, but there are more features in this because it's just a granular synth. And I'm going to open it up. And the first thing I want to point out is that I really like it because you can just drag and drop samples straight into the G UI or GUI, uh, whereas in Pigments you've got to kind of go into the system, find the menu that says import sound, etc. It's just much quicker this way. Okay, so if we have a look at the general controls, we've got grains, which is the grain density or the amount of grains. We've got the length of each grains. We can tune it. We can fine tune it. We can randomize each of those things as well, the density and the length, just like in the Pigments. We've got the wavetable position and we can randomize the position as well. And we've got level width, same as we've got on the other one. Okay, and the envelope shape. So I've just dragged in a synth loop. Now, I really like granular synthesis when you're operating with some kind of harmonic content. You can even pull in full tracks and start glitching around with those. But I really like synth loops, guitar loops, something that's not too long, but that changes notes and has got harmonic content in it. So we're gonna bring in this loop here just a jolly little synth loop and we've just dragged that in like so and then let's just hit play and see what happens 
already sounds amazing straight away let's shift the position so cool so let's fiddle around with some of these controls and see what we can come up with so i'm going to randomize the position a bit so we can see here it's going to dance around a little bit more increase the grains and the length and that's going to turn it into more of a pad so you can get such beautiful rich soundscapes. The other great thing about Quanta 2 is the fact you've got envelopes and LFOs that you can assign to different parameters and really just create some interesting movement as well as uh, effects which you can add in as well. But I'm not going to do that for the time being because uh, I want to just focus on granular synthesis today. So to create some more movement in this, I'm just going to pull down some of these because I actually preferred it before it was randomizing the position too much. I think that sounds really cool like that. But what I want to do is have this position kind of modulate with an LFO. So I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to choose the source to be FLFO1. Let's just click that. Make sure it's actually affecting it. So we can see it's dancing around that position now. Which already sounds really cool. And if we go over to the modulation tab, we can actually now control the speed at which this modulation is occurring. Slowly or quickly. And the shape of that wave as well, much like you would with any synth. So yeah, a really, really cool synth. And I'm going to show you an example of me creating a track using this technique in a couple of minutes. Okay, so where is granular synthesis useful for and where is it not so good for? Well, it really excels when it comes to creating really interesting rich pads and textures, as we've heard in a couple of examples so far. In terms of where I find granular synthesis not so useful is when you need to have a really tight control over the timbral information of a sound. Now that sounds a bit complicated, but if you think of a bass sound, the sub bass, anything below about 100 to 100 20 hertz you usually want to have maximum control over that because it makes such a big difference to the entire mix and the entire track in those cases i would tend to reach for a different instrument to create the really solid low down bass sounds and that's the main example the other is when it comes to drums so if you load in a drum loop into a granular sampler yes you can work with it but it tends not to sound as good or as interesting as if you're using harmonic content or melodic content. Again, these are just rules of thumbs. Absolutely go for it, experiment your heart out, but this is what I personally found works best. Now, both of the granular synths I've shown you today both involve having to bring in a sample which the synthesizer can then turn into grains and process. I mentioned earlier a synth called Portal by Output, and the difference with this is that it actually does it real time. So for example, you could bring a Portal or an instance of portal in after a normal synthesizer or a normal sampler and it's going to process and granulate that signal in real time it's pretty amazing okay for this example i wanted to show you what it's like if you do bring in a full track and load it into a granular synth so i've created some drums let's just have a quick listen to them like a bit of a lo-fi vibe Cool. So it's a bit chilled and I haven't put any other instrumentation in there because I'm going to allow the full track sample to dictate what the key of the track will be because it's all about experimenting with those lovely chords, that lovely harmonic content that's already there. So I've got a Quanta here and I've already loaded in the sample. It's an old everything but the girl track. So you can really recycle older music as well. And let's just see what is going on here. So you can already hear interesting sounds like that. Now what I've done for this instrument, instead of having the tune control key mapped to the keyboard, so when you press it, it's gonna play that sample lower down. When you go up the keyboard, it's gonna press it higher up. All I've done is I right clicked on position and I assigned the destination of this to be the keyboard. So what that means is when I press different keys on the keyboard, it's going to play different positions in the track. And you can already hear it's creating some interesting sounds. I've got relatively few grains because I want you to be able to hear like the vocal hits and whatnot. If I push it up too much, especially with the drums, it just sounds a bit like a Geiger counter. So I'm having it kind of lower down. I've made them quite long, so they're quite smooth as opposed to super glitchy like that. And that's how you kind of get that flumey sound. 
And that's pretty much it. I've just pushed the width up. So now it's a case of trying to find bits that you really like and jamming along to the track. So let's just try that. I've also added a sidechain compressor to duck it against the kick, but I might not need that. So let's just have a listen. Let's add some reverb to it. So I'm just going to copy this in now. Cool. So now I'm going to program in the bass line and this is the end result. Grooves. So I've just added a little bit of randomization on the position and then created the bass notes to follow the chords that were determined really by just experimenting with the position on where the grains start playing in the granular synth. So I think that sounds pretty cool, but there are so many more things that we can now do with this sound from the granular synth to make it even more interesting. And it's a great way to develop your signature sound. So I put together 13 of my most powerful creative sound design techniques in this next video here. But before you head over there, if you did enjoy this, please like it, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell if you do want tutorials each and every week for music production. And thank you so much for watching. I will catch you over at that next video.